Hey there guys, and to my shock and surprise, we're going to get an opportunity today to look at the Siege Wave 5 Voyager class Ape Face. If I'm not mistaken, I think he's the last of the Siege Voyager class figures. For right or wrong, for good or bad, <laughs> trust me, there's a lot of both with this guy. Either way, he's going to be our focus this time around in the latest Got By True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your humble host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, that's right, for now at least, hit that notification bell, because currently it's letting you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Let's hope that that keeps up, man. Check out Machinery Man, The Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, NL, and the Autobot family, and of course, find me everywhere across social media. All of those links for Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all of that good stuff down in the description. And this is the Siege Ape Face. And by now, a lot of people have had a lot of experiences and there's been good, bad, and ugly with this guy. Now, a couple of things I want to mention. I did do a few custom paint apps. We'll look at that. Not many, but I did do a couple because the battle damage on this guy is atrocious. We're going to talk about his controversial white plastic and we're going to talk about the fact that his um, gorilla mode isn't as flimsy and loose as most people are saying it is. I'll explain what I mean when we head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. Man, if you had told me a week ago that we would actually be diving in head first to Siege Wave 5, now I would have called you a liar. In fact, I probably would have called you a dirty liar. But nevertheless, here we are and I'm stoked to look at this guy. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the packaging first. You know it, I know it, this looks good. And we have the artwork over here. Interestingly, this looks like it might be white, kind of like this, or maybe it's all like gray. It's weird the way it's colored. Now it looks glorious, but it is a little bit different on the figure. Now perhaps this is black with a bunch of battle damage. You may have already noticed very quickly that I've kind of gotten rid of the battle damage on this guy, because you know me, I'm not a fan of it. Now I did leave it in one location. I don't know if I'll get rid of it or not, but it makes sense in the one location where I left it. Nevertheless, uh, on this side, your regular Siege artwork, and on the back, that's right, we have the product images, and hey, we even have Smashed Out over here, who I absolutely love and we took a look at a little while ago. We have ourselves handy dandy siege instructions and they're pretty great. Of course, my favorite part, as you well know, will be our good old stats page. And his shield is quite strong. And his blaster is, oh, uh, well, it's extremely strong. It's pretty accurate and it has quite a range. Actually, you know what? Ape face, for kind of as dumb as the guy is, honestly, He's an absolute brute force to deal Here's with. Here's the shield, and I'm showing it from this side because I wanted to show off this peg. A lot of people are complaining that it is fragile and cracks. Uh, they're saying the whole thing is translucent blue painted with this pink type of color. Maybe it is. I guess it is. I don't, I don't really find it is stressed or fractured or cracked. Mine's, mine's fine. Just, I don't know. Don't. Stick it in a port where it's, I don't know, like too snug of a tolerance. I honestly, this is going to sound weird, but you know where I put it? When I put it on his arm, I tend to put it kind of in the elbow joint. Now, I'll show it when we get there, but I love all the paint on this. He also comes with this boomstick. And I say boomstick because... Like, I feel like this is like a Cybertronian shotgun. Like, it looks like it would be powerful. It seems like it should be powerful. Um, I love the molding. I just wish that we had a little bit of paint to pick up some of that glorious molded in detail. And of course, here we have Spasma, who is not identified in the box as Spasma, or on the box, or in the instructions, or anywhere. Probably paying more homage to the Japanese iteration where this would have been Ape Face and the big body would have just been his exosuit. Nevertheless, here in North America, we know the little guy as Spasma, who's kind of a loudmouth and he's, you know, 
He tries to threaten and bully Ape-Face, and Ape-Face is just sort of annoyed by him. This is actually quite accurate to the animation, though the head should be that light color, kind of like the body. I'm going to say overall, though the face is pretty much right, I'm going to say overall, the look of this guy is about a, oh, I don't know, about a nine. It's pretty good. In terms of his articulation, uh, he can get the seated position. The arms do come forward, but they're real tight on this guy. I would not advise moving them a lot. Uh, one, two, nothing great. Uh, transformation, of course, you just uh, flip up his legs. Now, the reason I haven't shown any of that yet is because I just want to show him next to his Titans Return version. Oh, and he fell over. He's not going to want to stand. There. Um, obviously, the new one has more paint. It has. It, it just seems more premium. When you look at the back of them, well, you turn the Titans Return one around, and you can see on his, like, on the back of his legs, just legs, on the uh, back of his, wow, he does not want to stand up at all. Bear with me here, guys. There. On the back of his um, legs, it's just legs. On the back of him, we have a... Uh, robot head. On the back of this one, the lower body is the face of the robot, and the upper body is kind of the top of the head and the eyes, or the eye visor of the gorilla. When we fold this guy around, if we have this side facing out, it's the gorilla. If we have this side facing out, it's the robot head next to the Titans return, and their, let's see if I can do that, they're shockingly, like, painted way different and molded way different. In robot mode, you can use the Titans return head. Now, it's not going to work in any of the other modes, and I'll tell you why it won't work in any of the other modes, because you need to be able to use the back of the head for gorilla mode. Also, if you try and fit this down in the gorilla jaw, it just plain does not fit. I suppose you could use this in plain mode because it just sort of sits in a seat. Um, but you know, that's how it looks in robot mode. Of course, he comes with that head in robot mode and that's what he's intended to kind of have. Uh, the little Titans Return version does not have a robot mode, unfortunately. We're going to go next, I think, to the plane mode because, hey, why not? This guy's a triple changer. He's also a plane. He's also a gorilla. People have complained and said that, hey, in gorilla mode, he is not secure at all. Um, he is, but you have to know what he's doing. And there's certain things that I wish did work a little bit better here. So, uh, oh, by the way. I guess we might as well do this since we're in this mode. Uh, his overall look, uh, honestly, it's very, very true to the animation. I'm going to say 10. Really, 10. Now, you could leave the battle damage. I didn't. I got rid of it on his shoulders. I got rid of it on his shins. I just used a black gloss paint on the shins. And I used a um, shiny, brilliant purple. Um, from folk art on the shoulders. It's the closest match I have found to this sort of like, I'll call it Hasbro purple. Uh, I'd left it on the nose cone of the plane and did not paint that pink though. I may yet, I don't know, but I kind of like the silver scuffing on that, which is strange. I don't usually like the battle damage, but I dig it there. A lot of people have complained about the type of white and say it's very a milky white. I don't care. I'm fine with it. It feels like it looks like to me the sort of plastic that you use in like plastic ties. I don't feel like anything's gonna break. I don't feel like anything's gonna crack. I did earlier mention that of course we can put his blaster in his hand. He holds it fine. And I talked about where I put this um, shield. And you can put it on his forearm. You can put it on his shoulder. I put it honestly, I put it in the elbow. I go here and I tend to stick it in the elbow. It does not hinder movement or articulation in the least. Here he is with other well-known Decepticon headmasters. Now, here's where things get interesting. Because Mind Wipe is a small deluxe as where Wolfwire or Werewolf and uh, Skull Smasher, they're both normal-sized deluxes from the Titans Return line. And now Ape-Face is a Voyager, but he's not very much 
bigger. I've said it before on the live show that Voyager is going to become the new Deluxe and that Deluxe, because of something like the upcoming Earthrise, um, Cliffjumper will become the new Legends. Now, I don't know about you, but I look at this and I think to myself, Wolfwire was $17.99 Canadian and Weird Wolf was $39.99 Canadian. That is an enormous huge jump. Now, to be fair, at this point, the amount of plastic that we have in this Voyager is still comparable to what we have with Voyagers. So, he may actually be innocent yet, but when we look at his height and his size in comparison, and we think about the potential of guilty or innocent, I don't know, this is a strike against him. This is a strike against him. Nevertheless, he is quite accurate, and there's a ton of paint on this guy, so you know what? Maybe he will be in a suggest. The, the Titan Master is certainly a more premium one than what we got with Titan's Return. So, so right now, Guilty or Innocent, sort of up in the air. We have a premium Titan Master. We have a size that seems a bit smaller, but we might have an, an acceptable mass. We'll see that in a little bit. Let's get into uh, the articulation for the guy, because we haven't done that yet. Right now he's scoring a 10 for his paint apps. I think it's fantastic. In terms of articulation, we have a head that can go left and right, sort of wiggles up and down. The arm sections can go all the way around at the shoulder, all the way out. Um, I guess if you want his arm broke, he could got like a super deep elbow bend, super deep elbow bend backwards. Um, in terms of forwards, he has 90 degrees. Uh, we have a bicep swivel. We have a wrist that can go in or out. We have a no waist. I thought he had a waist. Interesting, but he does not seem to have a waist. And I just popped his head off of his body. That's that's not that's not good. For the record, his head does tend to fit in here, like securely, but it's not too hard. It's not too loose. It's just right. We have a thigh swivel. We have all the way up to the side. We have all the way forward, back a nice bit. We have 90 degrees at the knee. We have ankle tilt. Some people have complained about the backpack, but the backpack on this guy is smaller than the backpack on the original, just saying. Um, so, honestly, wrist swivel would be nice. I'm gonna say his articulation is a, a solid 9.5. It's pretty darn effective. What about the conversion? Well, let's get going right now into his Plane mode, we remove his head, we'll lay that off to the side. We can pick off the whole nose cone section. We can fold in this hand and fold in this hand. And then the whole arm folds up on the back. There's a little peg right here that goes to a slot on the shoulder. Do that and kind of bring the arm forward. Same thing over on this side. Do that and sort of bring the arm forward. Then we can bring these down. Uh, really, we do it by untabbing the foot here. Now, it, it, the instructions say to pull these out and then bring them down. I don't find you really need to. I mean, you can, I suppose, but I don't, I don't really find you need to have those like that. Then you rotate this whole shoulder section so that the uh, white is up by the, the wing. Same on the other side. Rotate so the white is up by the wing. Those wings are out. And this is like the top of the body really done. Now we have to deal with the lower body. And for the lower body, we fold up and fold up the toes. We kind of untab the heel. Actually, you know what? Before we fold up the toes, let's untab the heels first. We untab the heel and untab the heel. That way we can fold out the entire section here on the side on this hinge. And it just makes life easier going forward. Um, if I can get that down and get that down and fold that all the way out to the side and then over on this one, I should be able to do the same thing. Yeah, fold it all the way out to the side. Then we can close these up and fold up those feet like that. Okay, now we want to kind of collapse the entire leg and this is where things sort of get interesting. When we collapse the leg, um, very a la Combiner Wars style, we're going to bring it up and there's uh, like a little, couple of little tabs in the like abdomen section here 
and or a couple little slots, a couple little tabs that should lock in there. The thing is, a lot of people will do this and they don't really lock those tabs in. That's one reason why this is loose. So we bring that up and we bring that up. And these should tab in on the tummy. I'm going to make sure they're tabbed in and then we're going to go on. Once we have the chest pieces tabbed in, we can close this up and close this up. Now, we bring this down and it's very important that we kind of press all this together. There's a couple of little tabs and notches, um, like there's a little hooking tab back here and a little tab up here. All of that should be hooked together. Now, there is a hole here and a hole here. And we have this peg here and this peg here. Ideally, you should just be able to bring this down. I'm gonna take this down. You should be able to bring this down and it should just tab in there. Mine doesn't like to do it. So I find that what I need to do is open my leg out again. And I find, and I'll have to do the same on the other side. I find that what I have to do to be secure is kind of go in behind this piece of plastic here and push it on over. Same on the other side. Then I need to kind of make sure that the chest is uh, like is secured again with these two pieces and then fold these up and tab all of it together. Once I do that, the guy is actually super solid as a plane. That being said, we can open up this piece back here and that is where we can have spasma sit, close it back up. He's not quite in there. And then using this peg hole right here, we can put that piece in. And then finally, up under the nose here, we can peg his blaster in. It's very loose on some people. It's pretty loose on mine, but it does hold. And this is him in plain mode, which looks really good when we compare it to that sad sack, little inaccurate uh, Titan Master version. Now, that means we still have one mode to go. So far, just to, to make sure that everyone's clear, we have his look at a 10. We have his articulation at a, a solid, I'm going to say, um, 8.5. I may have said other numbers earlier, but they're the ones we're going with now. 10 for his look, I think it's pretty much perfect. 8.5 because I wish he had wrist articulation and it just dawned on me that he doesn't have a waist. I don't know if I marked him down for that before. Still, 10, 8.5, not bad. What about the most controversial of his modes? The gorilla mode. Well, indeed, going to the gorilla mode can be a bit of a bear. We're going to pick up that section and this section and we're going to just take those off to the side for now. We're also going to pick that piece up and bring it up over for now. On this side, we open out and we open out. Back here, we open out that and we rotate the whole thing down. Here, we open out that, open out the foot and rotate the whole thing down. Bring this back and bring this back. Again, I can tell you now that these two little tabs on the tummy underneath, they gonna wanna come out, man. Trust me, they are definitely going to want to come out. This arm here opens out and his little hook hand thing comes out as well. Same on the other side, and his little hook hand thing comes out. We need to bring this piece forward, which is his head, and it is flipsy flopsy. And we have a piece down right here that's sort of curved very, very strangely. We can take our, um, oh, I forgot to take him out. We can take spasma out from in here. If you didn't do so already, I guess I should have done that before I brought those down, take him out, close this up, and rotate these back down and bring this back. Spasma needs to fit in here. The Titan's return head will not just fit in there. Not only does he have to fit in there, but he has to fit in there a certain way because he's the eyes on top of the head. Okay? Now, this is where people get discouraged because they 
look at this guy and they set him up like this and they bring the head down over like this and they have it grow out like that and they say, there you go. And they say, there he is in his ape mode and he is flippy floppy and he does not want to tab. Here's the thing. You have to know what you're tabbing in. You have a little L-shaped hook here and a little L-shaped hook here. When this comes down, a couple of things need to happen. It's probably easier if I show it from the side. First, this needs to be pretty much flat on his back. And then when you do that, of course, this hinge comes up. You need to make sure this hinge is pushed in. And this needs to kind of come down and underneath and it will sort of hook up underneath. It is a pain trying to line it all up and push it all in. I'm going to kind of, I'm going to sort of show you it if I can, kind of up close what's supposed to happen, and then I'll do it just to show how secure he gets. So what we have up here is a little space, and there's a little space on the other side. That's what those little L hooks will lock into. The little L hooks are right here and on the other side. They should be straight across. You'll notice mine aren't quite straight across. They'll have to be straight across. Then this comes down, and it sort of pushes up to lock into position. And here's his ape mode next to the Titan's Return ape mode, which is just a little bit sad if you ask me. How effective is this ape mode? Actually, highly effective if you've done it correctly. The ape arms can go forward, back, out to the side, can bend back, but only that far forward. The hook hands can go all the way forward. The head can go up and down. It can kind of go left and right a little bit. Um, the, like, l he has knees, he has feet that can move. The whole hip section can move. Um, that's about it. I mean, how much movement do you really need an ape to have, honestly? It's a bear to get here. Here's the thing, he was getting a 10. And then he was getting an eight and a half. Overall score going into the transformation was a 9.25. I'm going to play in slight nuisance because you do have to kind of undo the legs a bit to push that nose cone in, at least on mine. But I'm not going to mark it down because maybe it's not on everybody's. So I'm going to say the transformation from robot to plane, it's interesting. It's not too bad. It's probably an eight. But the transformation from anything to ape is a one. It's awful. It's not done well. The tolerances are not good. Uh, a couple of people have said, that L hook section is tremendous. No, it's not. It's garbage. There was a better way to do it than that. It's a terrible, horrible transformation. It should have been engineered way better. Unfortunately, that means his overall transformation is only about a four. One of the worst I've ever come across. Getting to this mode is terrible. He was getting a 9.25, he has a 4. Honestly, overall score for this guy is somewhere in the vicinity of about a 6. Now, some people will come back and they'll kind of say to me, hey, no, you're too hard on him because getting to this mode is great. And if you love very complex transformations, or you love transformations where the tolerances have to be absolutely hair trigger perfect, then you'll love this guy. But the majority of collectors don't tend to like that. And a lot of people have said already that they don't like his transformation to ape. Personally, I understand where they're coming from. And if you just left him the way I started him, when I said, hey, you can do this and leave it here, but he's not secure, you can do that. This way does have him secure, but the price to get here is more than he's worth. Now, what about guilty or innocent? Well, you know what? The engineering aspect and migrating, there is a certain subjective nature to it because maybe you do like the transformation, but I can't get behind it because of the, I don't even want to say intricacy, just fiddliness involved with it. But it all boils down to his grams. By the way, I neglected to put his wing piece and his blaster back on, but I did it here for his mass. He clocks in at 163 grams. A traditional Voyager, for example, from the Titan's return line, such as Alpha Trion, clocks in at 167 grams. So this guy's in the ballpark but a little bit smaller, and he's barely there. With that fact, the fact that he is a little bit smaller, though he does have more paint, and taking into account 
the needless, um, poorly engineered conversion to ape mode when there was definitely a better way to lock in that ape head, I turn to the Quintesson judges. That's right, I ask you, my most esteemed Quintesson judges, is Transformers Siege, Ape Face, guilty or innocent of the, well, not even recent now, of the price increase that we all know too well by now? Guilty. Well, there you have it. Siege Ape Face tops off the Voyager line for the entire Siege series as guilty. He is not as good as the Seeker mold or the Optimus mold or the Megatron mold that felt more refined. The Springer mold was a little less refined, but it was kind of brilliant the way that it got pulled off nonetheless. There are good ideas here. Really good ideas. But the method that was used to it, uh, kind of solidify the ape body, should have been handled way way better. And here we are once again, and here he is, and okay, so, like, <laughs> for like a final set of thoughts here, I almost don't know where to begin with this. The custom paint apps I did, all I did were, was paint his shins a, a, a gloss black, and I used a shiny purple up on the shoulders, and guess what? It's fine. I'm okay with the battle damage up on the nose cone. Some people have complained about the backpack. Why? The G1 version had an even worse backpack. So I like the coloring, and I like the look. I like the articulation, even though the backward movement at the elbow is strange. I get it, it's for transformation, but it makes for a weird hinge, man. I love the Titan Master. Spasma's great. Um, unless you believe that the Titan Master is eight face and the big body is just the trans transtector or whatever it's called. Uh, I don't. I prefer to think of the little guy as the, you know, minion of Lord Zarek. Um, that's that's what I'm going with. That's that's how my life works, man. I don't know how yours works. The White plastic. A lot of people complain about it, and people have even said, like, I worry about the longevity. No, man. It's solid plastic. It is solid plastic. Have you ever tried to break one of those, um, um, like, pull tie things? Like, they're almost impossible. It's hard to even cut through it. I think the plastic will hold up just fine. Uh, the plastic peg on the shield? Mm, if you are pushing that peg too much, it might break off. Be delicate with it. Use a bit of common sense, man. Be delicate with it. There is a little peg down on the heel. Uh, I do worry about the longevity of that little peg. I will say that I don't tend to really, I guess, I don't know. I don't tend to like necessarily peg his heels in. A lot of times he's sort of in a stance on the display shelf. Anyway, um, getting to play mode, pretty easy. But if you just try to kind of fold that nose cone down, it doesn't really work. You really almost need to get your finger in behind it. I find with my copy, anyway, perhaps yours is different. Getting to that gorilla mode, I tried to show it as best I could. It is a bear. To just do the transformation to gorilla mode isn't that hard, but then it's also not very stable at all. If you want to try and push everything in and have the little tabs, uh, from the legs that lock into the abdomen, I guess. Uh, if you want to make sure that the... It's this. It's this piece here. If you want to make sure that this is locked in over those two little L-shaped brackets, that's a nuisance and a pain. I don't know why it was designed that way. And I, I get where they're supposed to fit. I even think in the review I said the incorrect location for where they're supposed to fit. Maybe I didn't. It's it's almost, it's such a blur. It's such a blur. But it's a bad mechanism for connecting the head to the body. It is ineffective. It's poorly engineered. It could have been done in a manner far easier, I have to believe. It's, it's a nuisance. It's a nuisance. So yes, you can make the Gorilla Mode solid, but yes, it takes way more work and effort than it really should need. It's not smooth. It's cumbersome. Which is sort of sad because it meant that at the end of the day, this guy was guilty. Perhaps he would have been innocent if his only if his only offense was the fact that he's about five grams lighter for a Voyager than he should be. But that's not his only offense. 
poor engineering is another offence. One could even argue that hollow forearms is another offence. One could even argue that a lack of a waist swivel is another offence. If we're paying a higher price, as we've been doing with the siege line, then we should be getting that like continued improved quality. And that's why we've been doing guilty or innocent. Is this continued improved quality? Sadly, I don't think so. Is he worth getting? Yeah, I think any collector would like to have Ape Face. In fact, I'd also like to have Snapdragon. Make him, man. Maybe don't use this mold for it, but make him, man. I'm glad to have him. I I'm sure that eventually he'll find his way into Universal Collision. And honestly, I will give credit, credit where credit is due because fans kind of clamored for this guy ever since the little Titan Master Ape Face came out. So I'm not disappointed to have a version of Ape Face. But I'm also not going to justify him uh, for being the price that he is being sold at. He's worth having, but he's also worth getting on sale. Anyway, let me know what you think about Ape Face. Do you think that I'm spot on? Do you think I'm being too critical? Maybe not critical enough. You know I love to hear from you guys. Again, please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out so very much, especially now if you're in a position to help the channel to grow. There is a donate link down in the description. Don't forget somehow, some way, each and every day you do make a difference. And I look forward very much to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way, man, right here inside the videos.